Michael Reinhardt. I'm the senior author of this paper. I'm going to present you the goals of the study and then passing through the different figures. Thank you for listening. The study is entitled Metabolic Pathway and Distribution of Superparamagnetic Iron Oxide Nanoparticles in an In Vivo Study. The object of this study was to analyze the effects of tissue soldering using spines. The, the basic idea is to fuse tissue without having the necessity to use sutures, like in the skin, by implanting a spine containing implant and using the electromagnetic heating source to immediately close the skin watertight and sealing also for bacteria. Of course, our goal was to use this for bypass surgery, for minimal invasive bypass surgery, for example, in neurosurgery. You have here a vessel A and a vessel B. Apply your nanosolder around, use your electromagnetic heating source, and then you can achieve an immediate tight connection of these two parts of vessel, meaning a patent bypass. Of course we studied the effect and had to check first if the spines were sufficient and could be kept at a constant heating temperature necessary for the tissue soldering. And this was effectively possible and even we were able to show at least as good as tensile strength used for sutures. This is a collaboration between the University of Bern, Department of Neurosurgery and the Institute of Applied Physics, as well as the Echo Polytechnique in Lausanne. You can see here the different co-authors having contributed to this study. What we did is basically implanted a spine containing albumin patch into the neck of the rat and in the different groups either sham operated, had an induction with an electromagnetic field or no induction. We did two things. We did an MRI tracking to find out where the spines could be found over time or if ever. For this we did also uh, uh, different series to find out the, the concentrations which could be detected. And secondly we did an in vivo rat study up to six months. We studied three groups, a sham group, a no induction group and an induction group. You can see here, just in the figure one of the paper, the kidney where we put the voxels to find and detect the spines in the liver in B and in C in the brain in the nucleus caudatus. Basically what can be shown or found is that there was no spines leaking or going out in a detectable manner to the kidney, liver or to the brain. This is shown in figure 2. Here in the liver tissue, three days post spines implantation, you can appreciate a normal histology of cytohactive architecture and the H and E staining in A, B and C no increased iron detection and especially the caspas staining showed no apoptosis. These are two different apoptosis staining. The local side, three days post implantation, this is the figure four of the publication, shows no immediate toxic effects as shown in the cytoarchitecture in H and E staining and as well in the caspas, no apoptosis or no more increased apoptosis than the normal sham. The local site, six month post implantation, you can see a degradation of the implant which is blue over time and the foreign body reaction produced and shown by macrophags. This is the second last slide, the figure 6, showing the ultrastructural aspect of the implant interaction 
using the transmission electron microscopy. Again, a normal architecture. And here in the figure 7, the ultrastructural aspect of liver from an implant bearing animal. Again, no toxic effects. So our conclusions were basically that these findings support the further develop, the development of spines designed for inducing hyperthermia or tissue soldiering, which is our main goal, and local application. This is very important for local application, and this is different from findings which, for example, have been published by Hanin et al., where he did find a toxic effect by having an IV injection of spines, the total dose in one, one single dose. So we have a local application with a slow resorption over time, and that probably is the, the, the important factor that we didn't find any toxic effects. So, finally, of course, we have to end and go on with a study which shows the complete resorption of this spine implant and then only we can de determine if effectively this is safe to use. Thank you for listening.